Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be maxing out the brand new Radeon 680M iGPU in the Ryzen 9 6900HS. I've actually done a couple of videos using the same chip and this iGPU. I'm a big fan of it. We've got new RDNA 2 graphics that should be coming to most of the new APUs coming out. But in those videos, we were never able to really max it out. But with this system here, I'm actually able to take the TDP up all the way to 85 watts. Now, uh, this is kind of an extreme test here. A lot of people aren't going to be running this CPU and GPU combo in a laptop at 85 watts. But I still wanted to see what we could do with this new iGPU with basically no power limits. And it's pretty amazing what these integrated graphics can do. So the only system I could get my hands on right now that would allow me to go up this high with it was a 6900HS laptop. And I gotta tell you, at 85 watts, the fans in this thing are absolutely screaming, but while gaming, I'm not hitting thermal throttle. Now, if you're not familiar with this chip here, we've got the 6900HS 8 cores, 16 threads. It's based on Zen 3 Plus. Got a boost up to 4.9 gigahertz. For the RAM, we've got 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz, and in the future we will see thinner and lighter laptops with faster RAM, which will definitely help out with this GPU. But AMD is calling this new integrated GPU the 680M. We've got 12 CUs, and in this chip here, we've got a max clock up to 2400 megahertz. And the biggest reason I wanted to take the TDP up so high with this system was because the new 680M iGPU can actually pull some wattage. I've seen it go as high as 41 watts here, and uh, remember, this is just the GPU side of things, pulling 40 watts out of this chip. So when it comes to the thinner and lighter laptops and handhelds, it's kind of going to be a challenge to give that GPU enough wattage, but I think they can kind of offset that by using faster DDR5 RAM. In this system here, we've got 4800 megahertz DDR5, but in a lot of the newer systems coming out, they're going to be using LP DDR5 running at 6800 megahertz. So I think that's kind of going to offset, you know, not being able to get enough wattage to this 680M. But either way you look at it, in this system right now, we're running it up to 85 watts, and the performance is absolutely amazing when it comes to integrated graphics. First thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. Then we'll jump right into some gaming. Okay, so at 85 watts with 3D Mark, we got a total score of 22,881. Highest score I've seen out of integrated graphics so far, and you know I test a lot of them, be it mobile or desktop. I also ran the Wildlife Benchmark. This tests the Vulcan performance of the GPU, 14,524. When it comes to Fire Strike, we got a 6,238. And finally, Time Spy with a 2,678. I was really hoping to get around 3,000 with this, seeing the other three scores there. But I'm fine with this because these are the best scores I've seen out of an iGPU so far. But those are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to jump into some real-world gaming to see what this thing can do. And the first question we got here is, can it run Crisis? And yeah, it can run Crisis. We're at 1080p, very high. This is the original version of Crisis. I didn't go with the remastered. I wanted to see if it would run it. We do get a couple dips under 60 at very high settings, but a uh, faster RAM will definitely clear this up in the future. Or you could take a couple of those settings down to high and still have an amazing looking game. But the way it's set up right now at 1080p, very high, we got an average of 63 FPS out of it. Next up, we've got the newest version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and this is the only one I had to take down below 1080p. We're at 900p low, and we got an average of 51 FPS. I also tested this at 720p low, we got an average of 67 FPS, so running it like that with VSync on would make for a really great experience, but at 900p low, it's still just a bit too much for these integrated graphics. I also tested out Halo Infinite, and I was really impressed by the performance. 1080p low, no resolution scale, we got an average of 63 FPS. Got a little screen tearing going on because I don't have VSync on, and with any of these integrated graphics, I always recommend turning VSync on to get rid of all of that tearing. But when I'm doing my testing, I always have it off just to see how high we can get that FPS to go, and this is really playable. Here's MK11, and I've actually done a lot of testing with this on iGPUs. It's a very well-optimized game when it comes to integrated graphics, but I've never been able to run it at 1080p high with a constant 60. But with this thing set up like it is, we can definitely do it. Round two, 
Here's Forza Horizon 5, and this is another one of those games that does work really well on lower end graphics. We got an average of 74 FPS out of this, 1080p, high medium mix with no resolution scale on whatsoever. Cyberpunk 2077, now when this first released we could barely get this to run on integrated graphics over 20 FPS, but CD Projekt Red has put out a lot of patches, and with FSR set to quality, 1080p, low settings, we can get an average of 63 FPS. Here's Elden Ring, we're at 1080p medium settings, and we only got an average of 57 FPS. And if I go down to low, we still can't quite hit 60, we get an average of 57 FPS. And even at high settings, we get an average of 55 FPS. There's really no in-between about this game right now on integrated graphics. And by the way, it'll do this game at 1440p, maximum settings at 30 FPS. So if you don't mind playing at 30, you can play it just like that. And finally, we've got God of War, 1080p original settings, FSR set to quality, and kind of just like Elden Ring, it's really hard pressed to hit 60 FPS. I mean, we're right there on the edge, and going down the low doesn't help out much again, just like Elden Ring. So with these newer AAA titles on the 6900 HS, we're definitely GPU bound with these integrated graphics. But when it comes to integrated graphics, these are the best that I've ever tested, especially at this higher wattage. So yeah, running the new Radeon 680M iGPU at around 40 watts does make for some really great performance when it comes to integrated graphics. But you got to keep in mind that not all systems that are going to be utilizing the 680M will be able to take the TDP up that high. The 680M is also going to be coming in the 6800U, which we will see in a lot of thin and light laptops coming up in the next month or so. And we're also going to get some handhelds with the 6800U, which does use the 680M. But with a lot of those devices, we're not going to be able to take the TDP up as high on the GPU side of things, never mind the CPU side of things. I've done some testing with this at lower wattages, 15 and 30. I got a couple videos out with the 680M. It does perform quite well, but you know, I kind of wanted to max it out and see exactly what we could do. And I think it does perform really well for being an iGPU. I'd actually like to know your thoughts in the comments below. Does it offer enough performance? Are you looking forward to the 680M and the 6800U? Are you going to hold off till the next one? Let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.